Beautiful. Hey, everyone. Good afternoon. It's your girl, Kiana, the goddess. I'm here with my amazing partner, DJ FMI, and we're proud to be here for yet another episode of VPR Radio. How are you, partner? Uh, I'm finally getting used to... I have to get used to allergies, all right? VPR. You shouldn't have to get used to that, man. I shouldn't. I shouldn't. But right now, this is my reality, and I'm coming to see it. My nose has been stuffy. I haven't been in the studio doing my music. I know. Um, but it's going to be a crazy summer dealing with this. So people that are suffering from allergies, my heart is with you because I'm going through it too. I'm blowing out boogers yeah. like every day. Right. You know I'm saying it, it, it's too much. And it's a bad time to suffer from allergies during Corona, right? Like, no, no, that's no. not the time to be sneezing and coughing and such. People be like, Kiana, it, that's what I'm saying. And the worst part is, it was supposed to be a hot girl summer, a hot man summer, whatever the dude's calling it nowadays. You and almost made me spit this wine out. You know what I mean? <laughs> how am I supposed to sit here and sound sexy if my nose is all messed up? You see? And this is what things I've been going with. So, yeah. Coronavirus, uh, allergies. Messing up everything. Uh, but, you know, when, when you when you get the phlegm, that's when you could do, like, the deep, like, Barry White, you know what I mean? Just say it with your chest. No, I've been singing. It can still be sexy. Finesse mm -hmm. it. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, that. I've been trying to figure out that little trick that, like, to get the mucus out. Like, you know, when, you know, you grow up in the hood, and there's always that one dude that'd be like, <sighs> and I'm like, Ugh. at first I found it disgusting. And I'm like, all right. But after all the mucus, I'm like, I got to figure something out. Because the pills ain't doing it. I'm tired of going. You know what you need to do? I've got, you know, I've always got the remedies, right? All right, let me hear. So you get, if you don't have eucalyptus drops, which are, you know, the essential oil, mm -hmm. those are the best. But if you don't have that, you can get Vicks, right? Put it into a pot, boil the pot, and then stand over the pot we gotta with have a towel and let that steam get all up into your lungs. That's also another great way if you um, get COVID or if you suffer from COVID, if you guys are currently to do that, but with different um, types of herbs and stuff to open up your lungs, because as you know, the virus attacks your lungs. I'm like, you're going to turn around some Bolivians and some Caribbean people, because VIX is the solution VIX for is all the cure-all. As like soon as you get VIX, I'm like, mm -hmm. you know what? It's, ro it's Robitussin for black people. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that tussin. You know, hey, I got Robitussin right now, so I'm going to say, I got Robitussin. I'm tired of taking uh, medicine and just, it's messing up my, my, my days and everything like yeah. that. So, Honestly, yeah. I don't even, I might have some Tylenol in the house and then like Advil for when my girls get cramps. Medicine doesn't even work for me. I'm immune to it. Um, so I like when my kids have sore throats, I'll either get some like Ricola or I'll make them natural cough drops with honey. I'll, I'll take chunks of lemon, put honey and then a sprinkle of cayenne pepper, put it on wax paper and put it in the freezer. Let me tell you, that will take your throat from feeling all fiery and scratchy to feeling so smooth and nice. Then you have some good hot tea yeah. with ginger, turmeric, and lemon. I'm saying here, lying yeah. myself. We, we get well around here. <laughs> hey, everybody. I can never see the comments, FMI. So I'm yeah, gonna we got to get that. Guys, if we're not responding to the comments, we're also looking at a bunch of screens in front of us. And, uh, right. Of well, we YouTube appreciate you. Our Facebook. We know you're tuned me. in, and we appreciate you guys for watching. Please share. We have an amazing guest today, a jazz musician, Carmen Jackson. Very, yeah. very excited. She comes. To us, through our girl Maisha, um, who is doing so much out here, PR Maven, our friend to the show. You know, she brought us Crossroads. She brought us mm -hmm. Marcus Mercado. She brought us B3. You know what I'm saying? Like, Liddy. It's been it's been a great experience here with all the guests that we've gotten over there. How long has it oh been? It's been God. two years. Three it's been partner. Three, 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 okay, yeah. three years. All right, look at that. Look at that. Time is flying by. And I just it oh, is, oh, isn't it? Like I said, like, share, subscribe. We appreciate that. But Kiana, you know what, what's been on my mind all day? What? I see my man, Bill Gates. The oh one boy. Of them, what's the up, one Elias? We see you. The man okay. lost his life. You know, and that's not, and, and they're, wait, they're what? leaving. Wait, well, wait, 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 what? Bill Gates no, died? Is that what you well, said? No, 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 no. They got a divorce. I said, oh, his oh, his yeah, wife. Yeah, his yeah, wife. Yeah. I just said the man lost no. his life. Oh, no, no, okay. no, 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 no. Yeah, we'll never get up on somebody. Bill Gates got too much up his sleeve to be dead, so. Um. <laughs> I'm like, he's doing so much things with uh, with the virus and other countries. Ah, I'm not going to either say my position on it, but. Yeah. Me and that man get a divorce, right? The first thing I thought of, I'm like, all right, this is one of the richest men in America or on the planet. In the world, um, yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm just like, yeah. what could this man be lacking in said relationship? If if it's not money, 
you know, with it with the communication. And that's not my business to ask. But I gotta think, because with a man that looks like he has it all, that legit can buy the world. How do you what do you, you know what do you get after that? What do you go I was having that? I was having this conversation, a similar conversation, different in nature, but about materialistic things and money and how it does not in any way, shape, or form equate to happiness. Mm. You know? Um, and then last night on Angel and Greg's show, The Best of Both Worlds, shout out to you guys. Yeah. They were talking about how, you know, people paint pictures of things on Instagram, Facebook, whatever. We've seen Melinda and Bill together. We know they build foundations and stuff, but we don't know what was going on inside of their marriage. We don't know if it's been an unhappy marriage for years and they just went through with it because of their political ties, because of their wealth, because of their social standing. Um, so I think that we need to separate the two happiness. Yeah, we need to separate the two happiness and love with money. Because money can build a lifestyle. Absolutely. Money can help you to solve problems and stressors. Lots of us are stressed out about finances, right? If you allow that, yeah. if you allow that to stress you out, that's probably something that you deal with on a daily basis. However, when you have a happiness with yourself, and that's the difference that you see with people that are like truly like in love with one another. And I'll use the Obamas as a perfect example. Oh, yeah. You can see their love, man. It radiates. You understand what I'm saying? And that's not, I'm a politician. You know, before all of that, you could see that they had an organic friendship. Their children are now grown. You could still see like the banter and the playfulness mm -hmm. between them. They have a genuine love and a friendship that is, you know, sustainable and, and has stood the test of time. But not everybody has that. And if you don't start out with your own self-happiness, you never know. Melinda might have been struggling kind of trying to catch up to her husband or feeling like she was always second best. Look at Aisha Curry and how she came forth talking yeah, about nobody's I, looking at We don't know. We can't understand what people's personal struggles are or what it's like for them behind closed doors. And that's why I yeah. say, before you can get married, you got to love you, man. You got to be whole with you. But do you think him having such wealth would like change the way the lover views him? Like you have to look at Steph Curry and Aisha. She wanted the notoriety that Steph Curry had, right? Right. But for what? Now, it's that part, I don't mind, her but own yeah, person. Know, so that, that she way. could feel so that she doesn't have to feel like second fiddle next to her husband. Now, while but, I can. So how do average men feel next to a beautiful woman? That's what I'm saying. That's why I can't I can't understand it because yeah. I can't, you know, from a woman to another woman. I don't get mm -hmm. that. But as someone that may be struggling internally with self-esteem and stuff, I can understand that if she's always had to play second fiddle and it's not like. When she's standing next to him, it's not like she's a beautiful woman. It's just like she's his wife. Well, so you know what I mean? And there's a separation. Right. But but she chose the life that she chose. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, you got to understand that. But I think what happens, too, that we see in a lot of relationships, right? And even in friendships, you can outgrow one another. That's, you can grow apart because your ideals change, because you're 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 becoming just more grown up. I mean, I got married at a really young age. Yeah. I outgrew my husband very, very quickly because I was already really mature. My career was skyrocketing and I was extremely ambitious and he didn't match my stride. And so we had a lot of issues. And even though we had multiple children, eventually I was like, I can't just stay in this for the sake of being in a relationship, mm -hmm. saying I have a husband, you know, and not a baby daddy or whatever, however you wanted to view it. I could not allow that to be the standard for which, you know, I had my happiness because I knew even though it looked pretty on the outside, I was extremely unhappy. That was definitely one of the times that I was at my unhappiest, at my lowest. I wasn't creating anything. Um, I was just not feeling good. And so I, I can understand why you would choose to get out of a marriage as a matter, money, whatever. True. You know, your happiness, you, you settling and staying in something just because of a, situation shouldn't be your only option. You always have mm -hmm. options to leave a relationship if it's positive, negative, or indifferent. You know what I'm saying? Right. So when I'm sitting back and I'm watching that, and, I, and I'm thinking to himself, you know, it's going to be all over the news. It's going to be everywhere. And then I'm like, if I'm Bill Gates, how is this going to affect my business? How is this going to affect my image? And then also... Does that mean Bill Gates is a bachelor? <laughs> Girl, if it works, you know what I'm saying. 
Shoot your shot if you got time. He's the most eligible bachelor in America right now. <laughs> and she takes a sip of whatever's in her cup. You know what I'm saying? This is finally some wine. It's some delicious Riesling that I discovered this week. Um, it's been a long time since I've sat at VPR and enjoyed and a, my wine, which we usually would do on a week to week basis. Yeah. So I was like, let me bring it back for some nostalgia because I missed you, partner. It was so great to see you at that 420 event. Oh, yeah, 100%. Excited. Uh, the footage was amazing, guys. Uh, all the positive yeah. feedback that you guys shared it for us. Uh, there's so many people on Instagram that I want to thank. Spin Syndicate, uh, so many pages we work with, but it's it's been an experience. I'm trying to get used to being outside back with the COVID, the open up yeah. the world. You know, I got clubs calling me, uh, weddings and things like that. So it's like, uh, I just want to make sure I'm safe. I understand. I want to make sure I'm safe. You know what I mean? As well as everybody that's uh, going out there, please wear a mask. I know that some yeah. of y'all got the, the vaccine. Great. More power to you. But just Mask up and stay safe. I have, a mo I have a moral question to ask you, FMI, because I actually just encountered oh, no. this yesterday. And I see that our amazing guest just slid through. So we're going to bring you up to the stage in a minute, my darling. Um, Maisha, we see you. We appreciate you. <laughs> so, you know, we both have, I would say, the same opinion on the vaccinations, right? Yeah. Right? If someone came to you with a big bag, to run a big vaccination campaign to go into the communities of color and, and vaccinate them, would you turn down that bag? Or would you say, let me just get that bag, even though I can't no. really stand behind this? No. That's why uh, you're with I've had, now, it, You have to remember, it's not only you that this is affecting. Like, yeah, I'm getting right. a bag, but I could potentially be harming so many others. That's so, right. You know, and I can't promise you, I can't sit here and just look you in your eye and promise you that you won't have any effects. I am not a doctor. You know what I mean? I am not in the medical field. So don't take my advice like that. But just know, it, that's why when I'm when I'm seeing The Rock and all the stars, I'm like, I get it. You know what I'm saying? With COVID staying inside wearing a massive, I get the message. And I know we have to push the vaccination in order to get past this. And other countries are suffering because they Do don't. Do we though? I mean, Africa's not being vaccinated and they have so some of the lowest numbers and the lowest death rates. But you know, and then, um, and then you have other cases like India also. You know what I'm and, saying? and the way, and the way particularly that vaccinations have been shown to impact people of color in their DNA, because our DNA makeup, that melanin is a very, very mm -hmm. special gift. Um, and so I won't get into all of the intricacies, but partner, I love you. You're amazing. This is why we're partners. We're both Libras. We think the same way. Yeah. I just had to turn down something, but I know that the next yeah. best thing is around the corner. Um, and I appreciate well, you got to look at it like this. If it came to you with that bag came to you, another bag won't come to you. That's you exactly what I said, partner. We're the same person. Okay, you work that hard, another opportunity is going to come. I mean, you didn't get We are the same person, bro. That's exactly what I said. I was like, if it's right there, that's where I am. And so it'll come back in a different form and it'll be better. Yeah, that's just the way that works, man. You just got to pay it to the universe. That's how I look at it. Love it. Yes, indeed. So speaking of the universe, we've got Miss Carmen Jackson here. She's been around the world and I, 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 singing her heart <laughs> out. <laughs> and she's got a new single. We're going to bring her to the stage. Hi, Hi. Carmen. Hi, how are you? How you doing? How you doing? doing great. Thank you for joining us on VPR Radio today. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Shout out to Maisha Asante Works PR. Yes. That is our girl. Yeah. So I've seen you performing. I know you recently dropped a new single um, and you are super professional and uber talented. Very. Can you tell us about your career and how you got started? Okay. Initially, I got started. Um, my uncle is a world renowned jazz artist, uh, Milt Jackson, modern jazz quartet. So nice. I was sort of born into it. You know, my dad was a drummer. And, you know, they were all musicians, all my own. Right. He was the world-renowned one. So that's how I got, you know, started in the music. Then, of course, church. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Singing in the church. Yeah. Then I started singing. You were singing those church, church solos, girl? Girl, I, I didn't do the solos. I used to be scared. <laughs> no, you were scared? You had stage fright. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to make sure my camera. Yeah, I was stage fright. So the more the yeah, yeah, the more I did it, the more, you know, the the fear, you know, the went, away. went away. 
Yeah, so now you can't even stop me. It's like, oh, no, that's right. I've seen you on stage, girl. That's why I'm like, stage fright. I'm, uh, Kiana, I just want to say that record, I watched a video for it. I love the choreography. I seen that, and that's what that's what got me. The background when you're singing, and the, the way that we go from your record, that's the one I'm talking about also. Yeah. That's on YouTube oh. right now. The energy that you have there and the what you could do with your voice is beautiful. That's why I was, I was on that one record alone. I just had Thank to take you. Yeah, Thank you. Wait to the remix. A positive type of song. And I think that we're missing so much of that just upbeat, you know, not dark, um, just really bright stuff. But pl but please tell us more. So you had stage fright, you're singing in yeah. church. Yeah. Wait, what, what age were you? Uh, when I was singing in church? Yeah. Uh, probably about like. 13, okay. 12, 12 years old. So you were just developing that voice, really, because you were just right. like puberty, and you were finding that that maturity in your voice. It's beautiful. Yeah, and then um, my uncle came to me. He called me up. He said, yeah, I hear you sing it in Detroit. You know, he lived in Teaneck, New Jersey, you know. And he was like, I said, what you talking about singing? He was like, so why you didn't tell me and this and that? He said, but I heard about it. He was like, I want to hear you sing. So of course, I had to go to New York and, and sit in the kitchen with him. And, you know, ironically, what was weird about it is that after he made me come there and sing for him in the kitchen, he passed away a week later. Isn't that weird? Sorry to hear that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so, that's yeah. crazy. Isn't that crazy? So, mm -hmm. I don't know, you know, he... So he was like, you know, I'm going to connect you with this person. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He had uh, Etta Jones. I didn't even know he talked to her until I saw her at like a jazz mobile in New York. She was like, yeah, your uncle called me and told me to help you. Wow. So, and this and that. But then I found, when I called her up, she had passed. Oh my God. Ooh. I'm like, wow, dang, what's going on here? So, but you know, I just kept going, you know, from there doing my thing. You know what I mean? Because it I was wanted like, that was his way of kind of pushing you to release your wings, right? And go fly. Right. Yeah. Right, right. Absolutely. And I, you know, I, I benefited. I learned from it and I kept going. I didn't stop. You know, that was the main thing for me to keep going to honor the, the legacy and keep the music alive. You know, Absolutely. not even my uncle, but jazz music, of course, is my first love, but I love all music, you know. I love that. Shout out to Super MC in the building. We see you. Much love oh, to you. Huh? Hey, so. That's family, right? Yeah, that's my family. He's around the corner. Yes, indeed. <laughs> I mean, literally. <laughs> yeah. Now, my question yeah. to you. Do you remember your first on-stage performance? I want to know your feelings. I want to know what was going through your mind. I want to know where it was at. Because I love hearing that. Okay. Oh, Lord, you taking me back. Okay. Yes. My first real on stage performance was with uh one of my mentors uh harold mckinney his daughter galen mckinney you know she got a, a cd out she's a drummer so he would do these workshops you know trying to get help the singers and the musicians you know mm -hmm. because you gotta know how to work with musicians when you're on the stage of course right mm -hmm. can't just get up there singing all well and yelling so I was so nervous and scared. He was like, oh, my first song, uh, oh, what's the name? Oh, Lord, you, oh, you a hot mess. You got me thinking. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good question, FMI. <laughs> I got to know. These are the things I got to know. I think he was Lover Man. I don't know why, but I'm feeling, yeah, Lover Man. Okay. Lover Man. That was and, my very first. And where on did you perform that it was at the Serengeti Ballroom in oh Detroit, Footwork. And uh, yeah, that was my, and then I, what was weird about it was he had it taped this uh, uh, public television station here, Channel 56. So he had us, the television people there too. So, you know, I was really scared. <laughs> And those the first couple of notes came out flat, and I was like, "Oh, he gave uh -oh. me that look like you better you, better, you, know. <laughs> you better fix it now. You, <laughs> it. you, <better> <laughs> you can't be scared now. You you got to do it. Right, right, right. All or nothing. 
Yeah, so I, I, I pulled it off. And, you know, I got all the applause and stuff. So it was a lot of fun. It was a learning experience. And I'm like, whoo, can't be scared. You got to be out. You got to be on top. I, and I so did, did that, that, <laughs> right, absolutely. Did that performance really change things for you? Was that the moment that you were like, okay, I can do this. I know that it's scary. But did you did you feel alive when you were on stage? You knew all the spotlight was on you. Once you got over that fear and you swallowed that lump, did you feel like you belonged? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's like, even now, it's like when you, well, of course, stuff is not really open, but yeah, yeah it's like a sense of belonging. This is my passion. This is yeah. what I love to do. So let me continue to do this. Yes. I love and then I, I always love the audience's uh, feedback. I just did something on Sunday. It was called the Backyard Boogie. It's a gentleman that's running uh, the new WJZZ. And he's like, Carmen, are you coming to the Backyard Boogie? <laughs> I said, you know, I said, okay, I'll come around there for a second. And I uh, get around there with my little yard chair, whatever, trying to social distance and stuff. He's like, you going to do a song? I'm like, no, I'm just chilling, you know. Or so you <laughs> thought. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a setup right there. <laughs> that was set up big time, right? <laughs> What's up, Greg? We see you. You know, I did a lot of the musicians start walking in and I'm like, oh, okay, great, good. Then we had Tony Strata, P Funk. I'm like, oh, okay. I'm looking around, seeing everybody come through the door. Then he come back again. You gonna do one? I'm like, no. Then <laughs> <Shut up. laughs> <laughs> I know somebody to sign my name on the list. I'm like, y'all bugging here. Y'all bugging. Then the next thing I know, they're like, oh, let's call up Carmen Jackson, do a song for us. I gave them a look to kill. <laughs> I know that's right, girl. Me that's like calling you up to make a toast or a speech and you just not ready. Like, what? <laughs> but then you got to do a whole performance? Oh, God. Yeah, you know, because I just had on a little t-shirt. I wouldn't dress. You know what I mean? I wasn't going to perform. I was just going right. to chill. Right, right, right. Yeah. Oh, they were chill. like, that's your price to chill. <laughs> <laughs> a song. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so I got up there and I did one song and it was a lady in front of me. I think I did... Uh, summertime. And then I say, oh, thank you. You know, y'all can stream my song. Where did we go from here? Download. Y'all to you know, I gave my little speech since y'all got me up here. <laughs> then, and, uh, that's right. Plug perform. it in. Yes. The fact that you could get up on stage when you didn't go there to perform. If right. I've done that, I've done many concerts where artists be like, oh, I, I, I forgot my song at home. Excuse me, sir? How you forget your song at home? Okay. You bring on <laughs> yeah. the USB. What is going on? So it's dope that you were ready to do something. You know what I mean? You got to be ready to do yeah, something. Yeah, a, a true professional is always on, right? Even when you're not on, you're always on duty. Right. Just right. Like, um, and what was weird was because, like, I'm looking at, you know, when you're on stage, well, it was a jam. That's what they were doing. Uh, Tasha Owens had a jam, and she's a great blues singer. And it, some of them were, like, her band members, and then you had other guys just coming up to jam. You know what I mean? So... You're like, okay, what song am I going to do? I don't know this person, but I'm listening to you play, right? You know what I mean? So you you trying to make it easy as possible for all the musicians, you know, because I wasn't trying to have no train wreck, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I say, oh, Chris, I've been on your show before, so I know you can play. So, okay, if it's just got to be me and you, but that drummer got to go. Okay. But luckily, I didn't have to say that because another drummer came up. Right. Compose your band from scratch. Yeah, I had to. Oh, okay, let's let's do it. Let's do it. It's like a it's like a Top Chef competition, but like for singers, right? Like we're gonna put you on the spot. Perform right now. You got like a few oh, okay. minutes to get it all together. I feel like yeah, I did so yeah, so I'm like, okay, I'm pulling it together at the last second. So I'm like, okay, let's do something simple. Let's do it. And uh, we pulled it off. I'm done with the song. People standing up. Yeah, more, more, more. I'm like, this is a jam session. I, <laughs> I got to go. I got to go. No, no, one more, one more encore. I'm like, oh, 
y'all put me in a trick bag for real. Yeah, yeah. Let me ask you, a more, you know, I was Let nice. Me I one more. It was fun. <laughs> That's beautiful, oh. though. It just shows how organic. Um, it is for you to connect with people through your music. So that's that's a really wonderful thing. Yeah, it was just unexpected. You know what I mean? It was unexpected. But it was I want to ask you a question because I know you've been in the industry a while and you've seen it change a whole lot. What do you think one of the biggest things that you've learned and really had to take to heart um, through working in this industry and the various, I'm sure there's a million different experiences that you've had and you've just taken a bit from each, but like, what would you say has been the biggest lesson for you? Oh gosh, um, it, the the musical platforms, you know how it went from um, as far as the recording, how stuff went from the vinyl to the CD, from digital to MP3. MP3. To Remember iPods, guys? <laughs> Even that was the before guy. iPods. That was the first MP3 like explosion of music. <laughs> yeah, so it, it has drastically changed, and especially how you you're recording now. So now, it, yeah. a cool thing is is that you can use a musician in another state without actually going to another state. You know, you right. can record that way and work with many many different artists. But as far as on the business side and, and dealing with people, it is crazy because oh. now that they have the online platform, it's like, um, hmm, you really don't need like a, a what did they need before? What, the DJs, you had to palm the DJs. Mm, you had the DJs, you had the a and you had- you, the you still need the DJs. The a and I would say, have, 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 have gone down. You yeah. know what I mean? Because a lot of times the DJs now are acting as the A&Rs because they're the ones that are distributing the music and getting a remix. Yeah, in. that is you know so, what I'm that's true. I got to give props to the DJs because they are acting as the, the PRs now because the song, um, my song is doing quite well over in the UK and it's because of the DJs. Absolutely. Absolutely. Getting it. a hold of it and promoting it and stuff. So yeah, the DJs have a huge hand in the business nowadays. So they're wearing a lot of hats now versus, you know, going through management, especially for a lot of independent artists that sure. need, uh the what YouTube and iTunes and all these different streaming platforms mm -hmm. versus before uh trying to get a record deal. Right. So let's talk about it. Yeah. So now that's a big thing because Back in the day, everybody wanted a record deal, but now sure. it's like the record everybody. deals aren't even worthwhile anymore, no. right? They give out those three sixties, which is like you start. Yeah, it, yeah. It's the perfect name for the deal because you start off you right where around, you get. Find your money the whole time. You're running three sixty trying to find your money. You just running like a hamster. Yeah, that's the crazy <laughs> thing. And I'm hearing all these horror stories, like with you know a lot of artists, like not getting their money from these companies and stuff. So sure. yeah. I'm like, wow, well, what's that? You know, where they're getting like the publishing or just not owning their masters, mm -hmm. you know? We talk about this sort of thing all the time because we only play independent artists. When FMI and I started the show, we really mm -hmm. wanted to stay true to what we've always done. He was a former A&R for Convict Music. Um, oh. He used to come out to live shows that I did and we only promoted independent artists met a lot of amazing, amazing artists that have gone on to get signed and whatnot. Um, mm -hmm. But we really are in that indie circuit. So when you have that that connection and then you understand how to make that work without having to have the machine behind you, I mean, yeah. it's pretty life changing. We're seeing independent artists out here. We know so many we've had on the show yeah. that travel around the world on their, living own their best life. Really? On their own and they're, they're, you know, they're allocating their money properly. Absolutely. Music properly. And that's why I'm glad that you brought up some of our old acts. Like, look mm -hmm. at them, how they're still fighting for their money with these record labels. Yeah. And it sucks. And you have to think they're going in, they're signing these guys or these young women from neighborhoods and that aren't the best. And of course, when they see 30,000, you're going to take it. Right. You know, yeah. But now, 30,000 doesn't seem as much as it was 
in it's, early it's not or the early internet or way before that. Just, that's you know, only yeah. that's only half of one Bitcoin. Shout out to Velvet and <laughs> shout out to DJ T. Twenty thousand is babkas, right? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I take thirty thousand shoes. Right, right, right. <laughs> but but I don't think you would take that for seven years of your life and seven albums. You know what I'm no. saying? Oh, no, and no, not no, owning no. your not owning yeah. your masters and your publishing. Have you ever had any of those experiences where like anyone gave you a dirty deal? You had maybe a song that you composed or wrote and, and, and someone was able to snatch it from you? Did you have to learn any of those harsh lessons? No, no. That's for you. I'm great, Thank that you. is great. I'm glad you said that so quickly. No, yeah. so I've heard, you know, and good for me that my yeah. uncle's uh, widow, Sandy, she was like, you know, you're gonna do this. You know, she said to me after he passed, she said, start your own publishing company. There we go. Mm -hmm. Start your mm -hmm. own company. That way, you know, you don't have that issue to worry about. So that's what I did. You know yeah. what I mean? Perfect that's advice for yeah. upcoming artists, right? Yeah. Hey. Start your own publishing company. Hold your rights. Thank Say it again. The rights to your name, the rights to your music, your master publishing. Yeah. We it takes a lot, it. but hold on to it. Yeah. The best you can. Yeah. <laughs> And and these are the ways that you're able to create something different, generational wealth. I mean, I know you come from a musically successful family, but for a lot yeah. of breakout artists that are coming up from nothing, you know, um, and they're and they're taking deals because let's say it's not thirty thousand, it's a hundred thousand, but it's for seven years and it's for six albums. They're really taking so much from you. And if you apply yourself and say, you know what, I have ten thousand dollars saved, I'm going to put that ten thousand dollars into my career. And you really back it up and work hard, you can become so successful and change the narrative for your family. That publishing, having your masters, those are the things that create that passive right. and residual income. And, and that that's generational what you wealth your family. And what stick to it because it doesn't happen overnight, but invest in yourself. Yeah. Invest in that that would be my uh suggestion. Continue to invest in yourself and, and hold on to all your rights, publishing and everything. But it's not an easy road by far, but just keep going. Don't stop. Don't get very up. lucrative one. Right. It'll right. Carmen, let me ask you, when it comes to your new record, what was your inspiration behind it? When you sat down in the studio, <laughs> I need to know. Because when I was watching the video, I seen you going back and forth with the gentleman, and I was really listening to the conversation. And I'm like, okay, where are we going from here now? So let me get okay. the inspiration behind as well. So I made the, the song, I wrote the song, um, about this guy I used to date for seven okay. years, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, he, um, we would travel and do all this gay stuff, but I got to the point, you know, for some reason, like, okay, where are we going from here, you know? Yeah. Mm, you gotta ask him the question now. Yeah, I gotta ask you this question, because seven years, you you know, you wasted a lot of time. I don't to do seven years. I'm like, yeah, I got, yeah. That's a, that's a bit. <laughs> That would never happen again. I wish it didn't happen again, but it did. And that's how I, I, I wrote the song. You to tell me where do we go from here? You know, you right. know, all this sweet, sugary stuff, love this stuff, right. traveling in the world. And that's right. <laughs> it's, a, it's empowering as a woman. I mean, these conversations need to be had. We, we see so many people being, being dragged along for years and years and years and just kind of and before you came on, you know, we were talking about unhappy relationships. And again, shout out to, to Greg and Angel who were who were covering this topic last yes, night. Lord. But you have to be able to, your partner has to be adding to your happiness, not taking away right. from it, or not like stagnating it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it can get stagnating very fast, or you could, you could waste a lot of time before you yeah. realize. And yeah. you can't get that time back, honey. I know. Hey. Yeah. For seven years, though, I'm like, I, you know, when you're getting up there, I don't even knock you for that. The song, right. and you got a great song from it, so I'm here for it. Okay. <laughs> it was, you know, I, I changed it around a lot in, uh, in the video when I was asked, you know, where do we go from here? You got to tell me right now, not to That's right. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> She, she did a Taylor Swift <laughs> with the music. She said, I'm done with you. I'm going to write a song about it. Like, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. let's go. Have you too. Have you too. And I told him too. I'm just so just for you. And you know, right. God bless us. So he passed away though. But oh, we're sorry to hear that. Yeah, yeah. wait. 
got a chance to, you know, hear the song and stuff, you know. Okay, good. And, was proud of it. He was like, well, I know you're done with me, but you know. <laughs> you better, you better better me. It. If somebody called me and tell me they made a song about me, I'd be like, why you got to call me and tell me, though? I'm a hit of a girl for the hell. Like, you don't got to. I, I know all too well. I was I had to tell him, okay? <laughs> After all of that time, you going to know how I'm feeling. What you going to know about this one. Pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get it off. It was a release. Yeah, absolutely. And that's yeah. the great part about creating, right? Like you can use, you can pour your emotionality and the things that you're going through, good, going through at the time, good or bad. You can pour it into your music. You can pour, pour it into your artistry, um, and it's just a wonderful thing. Carmen, it has been so great having you here. Please tell us what's next for you and where we can find you and follow you. Where you'll be performing? How we can how we can get more of you. Okay, next is going to be the video for the remix. Uh, where do we go from here? It's going to be the house version. We'll, 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 we'll Hello. Bump, 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 bump. We'll get it. Don't worry, Maisha. We'll make sure we got that. And we're going to make sure to get your song on our playlist song. as well. Yeah, oh, cool. I appreciate that. And then you can follow me yeah, on Facebook, Facebook, Carmen Jackson, Instagram, um, Twitter. Carmen Jackson music on all those type of platforms. And then I'm hoping by September we can release the whole EP. Perfect. At least on my birthday, September the 17th. That's what I'm shooting Yay. for. Oh, you're almost a Libra. We love it. <laughs> 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 you're almost a Libra. Right there. You're, you're yeah, right there. there. <laughs> yeah, we close together. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Cool. They are so infectious. So yes, it's been a pleasure. We can't wait to have you back after you um drop your album. We would love to have you Thank back. You. Hopefully, Thank we get to see you perform you. live as things continue to open up. Yes. Absolutely. That's what I'm shooting for now. Yes. yes. Carmen Jackson. Make sure you guys follow her at Carmen Jackson Music. Go get her new single, Where Do We Go From Here? It's empowering. It's uplifting. It's, it's high energy. You're going to yes. love it. And her, her voice is so freaking soulful. Like if you really love a good voice and not having all of the manipulation and the iTunes and, and the auto tune and stuff, this is where you want to be. And she does it effortlessly. Effortlessly. So she's a professional. She's been doing this a long time. Yes. <laughs> you made me want to go to a jam. I've never been to a jam, and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna have to help myself. Right. <laughs> Hey, y'all keep y'all keep me on the um y'all keep me in mind, you know. Some some going on where you at? Let me know. I, I'll be going to have a recall. Yes. Yeah, we'll do that. We most definitely will. We appreciate you. We love you. We look forward to having you back, Carmen. All right. All right. Mwah. Mwah. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. She's amazing. Yeah, no, she I love her energy. Every Thursday, we try to bring you the dopest content, guys. Every Thursday, uh, every Thursday. it feels so good. Every Thursday, when I leave VPR Radio, we got we got a few questions to answer. Okay. For, some people have been messaging me that love VPR, and they're asking right. when are we gonna be back in studio. You're doing it on the live right now. That's the funny part. And okay. it's I really want to get back in studio, guys, but we got to make sure this COVID situation is at right. least. Uh, we, I mean, uh, in all in all actuality. Out. You guys probably know that I'm remote schooling my kids, so I've already confirmed that they're not going back for the rest of the year. So the likelihood is like the earliest we'll be getting back on is in the fall. Hopefully by then enough people will be vaccinated that it'll we'll, we'll have had that herd immunity. You know what I mean? And, and us unvaccinated can yeah, mix well, with vaccines and everything will be cool. Yeah. Before we, let's chop it up. If I see y'all walking without no mask in public, if we outside, cool. I'm going to be okay right. with it. You don't got to right, be like, right. here with me. But <laughs> if we go indoors, I just need you to, and I get it, the guides are out there. If you're in a group with your group, you don't have to. Cool. Just right. be mindful of other people around you. Do what you do. That's right. Just when you go near other people, please. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. everybody's not playing nice. Okay. On and I've never liked the close. The cl yeah. I, need you to, I need you to back it up at least. A I smell bad breath in like a year and change, though, so I'm happy. That's Nobody because they're selling behind. their own behind their mask. Mm -hmm. It's been a blessing, guys. V VPR, <laughs> COVID, if it done a lot of stuff, at least I ain't have to smell bad breath. Tune in every Thursday, share, like, and subscribe. Don't ever, ever get close to someone where you have to smell bad breath. No one deserves it. Oh my it. god, I know. But 
just to bring it back on a hip hop tip, Mace, the one and only yeah. Mace, he came out recently and he's just like, this is day three of uh, 21 days of him saying unpopular opinions. And okay. yesterday he said, gang culture is whack. Mm -hmm. and I agree. So, you know, I, I agree. agree. And he said, the reason I say that is look at how many rappers we lose. And how do you have to be in a gang that you're going to be protected? Why, if they love you so much, why would they take you away from your kids, someone you love, okay. and make you lose your life yeah. in the name of them? And so he's just like, I can never understand why you think joining a gang makes you look tough. To me, I think yeah. he but That's what he was saying. And when I was reading it, I was just like, okay. And you know, the more I agree with it, the more I see these rappers keep shooting at each other in Florida and other places, New York, I'm just like, when will the gang culture not be cool? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You can rap. You don't have to be gang gang. Or, or how about this, right? Because if we take it back to the 60s and 70s, and we've spoken about this before, um, yeah. partner, because we cover the gamut of so many different topics. But the gang culture was actually created to protect the communities from, like, violence, from mm -hmm. outside. The, the gang culture had the right context behind why it was created. Because if we look at these other cultures that have their own communities, that have their, you know, their their fire um, house, they have their own police department, they have their own hospital. That was yep. the whole concept. Somehow it turned into turf wars and, but again, the narrative, it's so easy to switch it when you've got that slave mentality. And that's what what's happening as, They've gone further and further. People started doing sub, right? It used to be Bloods and Crips. Now it's like yeah, 50, and then 100 and then subdivisions of each. It's like religion. You know, I, well, I'm a Baptist, but I'm a Southern Baptist. You know what I mean? So we, <laughs> we do things a little bit differently. And it's just like that. Well, I'm a blood, but I'm a, but I'm a stone blood. So we work like this. Yeah, and we yeah, handle yeah. this area. And it's lost. You have to think and, about and, it, and it's black. And we're, and we're definitely seeing. Too many of our artists and, and too many of our community go. We're killing each other off as if we don't have enough problems. And that's why, like, even, even with the way I approach every individual outside of it, even if I don't know you, I try not to bring a negative energy as far as, like, saying, oh, what's good, my nigga? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, what's absolutely. good, my nigga? Mm -hmm. I reined it back in because I'm like, you know, I'm not going to be the same person that's tearing down my community. You know what I'm saying? Right. At the end of the day, we all we got. And if I'm not looking out for the person that looks like me, then that says a lot about me. Absolutely. Instead of always trying to be tough, you know what I'm saying? And I just feel like- and partner, you always, like, I know you can give it up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, we're the same person. You know that you could go there, but your demeanor is just always open and your spirit is just so, so full and so friendly. And I feel like when you approach life like that, you can shut down some of that tension because we've got the, the frustrating thing is that with this gang culture, so many of our children are being lost to it because parents are not communicating, they're not connecting with their children, and they're letting the streets, the internet, and everybody else raise their kids. And, and yeah, oh, that's what we're seeing a lot of, unfortunately. I'm telling you, this generation that we're in right now, I can't wait to see what they become because with social media and them getting their fame with that, you could, you could go so many routes sure. online. And and make your you know and become famous. So many routes and create generational wealth, like we were just talking about. But how are you gonna like bounce back? Like this to bring it back to OnlyFans, right? I say OnlyFans because after a year goes by or two years of you showing yourself, if you use OnlyFans for that, mm -hmm. what happens when you when you try to now charge that same person you've been charging for years? You know what I'm saying? Right. What happens? If, you can't monetize the same people for years and try to charge them more. That won't work. Well, I mean, it it will work if they're your super fan, right? Because then they're like, whatever, I'll give you whatever. Well, if they're not your super fan, fan, they're like, I'm going to the next best thing. You've, you're already three I'm years older. <laughs> I'm going to the one three is. years younger. Right, that's right, right. That's is. You're always on to finding the next best thing. Absolutely. You see a video that blows your way in 30 seconds. By the time you scroll down to the next two videos, another video will blow your way in the next. And that's all. It, and that view that they that's got, it. you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just, I sit back and I think that's pushing everything. Social media pushing it, gang culture, sure. and sure. Mace definitely hit the nail on the head by yes, saying that. A lot of people got behind him, and I, you know, it made me want to look into what he's saying more and if he's doing things to help his community, which 
I'm pretty sure he is. Yeah. And, and I love that. I want to shout out to my boy, Cartier. Um, he's involved in the Guns Up, Life Down. I mean, um, life, Guns Down, Life Up, excuse mm -hmm. me, um, campaign that they have out in Harlem. And it's really important that we're able to pool our resources and get behind things like that because we do have so many children being wiped out. His son was actually shot in the head a couple of years ago. You know, so he's had violence right there on his doorstep and he's a he's a local celebrity, you know, um, and we're still being impacted. Like if we can't feel like our children can be safe, not in they're already unsafe, having interact, having potential interactions with the police. Right. Mm -hmm. Now we have to worry about them being safe in their own environment. Things I'm just more, I'm more just astonished by how aware children are now. Yeah, you know, I, I speak to my little cousins and they understand everything that's going on. They're growing and, up and so much faster. Me, I understand politics. Yeah. I didn't understand politics until I became a man. Right, you know right, 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 right. They get it right now at nine. Yeah. They understand what the two parties are. They understand what they're arguing about. They get it. So, uh, well, I think, I think it's hard to go through the last four years, even if you're a kid, and not realize that Trump no. has been stirring the pot, honey. It, and, and, it's only, and it's only opened the doors for more radical, extreme, yeah. mild, yelling, people to enter the space, whether it be Republican or Democrat. Correct. But now, being the loudest person in the room is the only part of the conversation that matters. Yeah. The truth doesn't matter. Being loud matters. Being loud matters. And when somebody accuses you of something, just talk about something else. Just be louder, switch the subject, and, and be loud like, about it. <laughs> you know, I, mean, I did this, but uh, last time I checked, the sun came up. Right. We should talk about the sun and global warming. You know what I mean? So it's just, I, I, I'm sick yeah. of seeing that online. When you're wrong, you're wrong. You know what I mean? You did something wrong. I get it. And just show some humility. I just feel like we lost that now. Yeah. And, and, well, I'm, and I'm glad we still have it, partner. I try. That's what sets us apart from, from so many different people. Um, and I just want to say, as always, like I'm super appreciative and, and just very humbled to be able to be your partner because we, we view things nice you know, very in a very thoughtful way. You know, um, I think that we're able to put ourselves in different scenarios and kind of play devil's advocate. Um, mm -hmm. And we know what we know and we speak strongly on it and we and we stick to our convictions and our moral compass. And and we're going to continue to do that. You know, you guys that watch us, follow us all around the world. We love our fans. We love you guys for sharing. We're going to continue to stick to our guns on what we believe. We're going to continue to bring you pure, organic, amazing content and amazing artists and photographers and all sorts of people in the industry yes. and authors and actors and from all walks of life um, that are really out here making a, a positive difference because ultimately that's what we're trying to do, right? FMI, we're trying yeah. to make our positive imprint on the world. So I'm happy to be doing it with you, partner, because it's an amazing- Definitely, these three letters that are on my chest, I stand by it, these colors, I stand by it, and you should do the same thing for anything that you love or care about. Whether it be that's a profession right. from when you care about, just go for it. And don't take no for an answer, but just be mindful of the hands you shake and the doors you close. That's, you know what? And That's on it. that note, okay? It's been another great, great episode of VPR Radio. I appreciate you, partner. Thank you everyone for watching. We will be back here next week. We have two amazing guests for you, a doctor, Dr. Perry, and then we also have Ron Godfrey, who is a renowned author, an actor, and we're gonna have another exceptional show. So please stay positive, keep a smile on your face, and remember, throughout your journey every single day, just try little acts of kindness. You never know who you can impact and, and make a difference, you know, for. And that's what we're here for. We love you for watching. We'll see you next Thursday. Thank you.